June 10, 1991, J.C. Lee Dugard heads to the school bus stop down the street from her house. A car pulls up, screeches to a halt. The screaming 11-year-old is dragged into the vehicle and takes off. Her stepfather witnesses the whole thing in horror. After 18 agonizing years, a miracle. J.C. Dugard was found alive in Antioch. Excuse me. <laughs> Police believe that for almost two decades, J.C. lived in these hidden backyard tents and sheds held captive by convicted rapist Philip Garrido and his wife, Nancy. Another shocking discovery. Police say J.C. has two daughters, ages 15 and 11. They say the father is Philip Garrido. So just think of the hope that J.C.'s story gives to the hundreds of other families who are right now still waiting for their phone call. Without the intuition of these two women who are sitting next to me today, J.C. would very likely still be missing. This is uh, police officer Allison Jacobs and police specialist Lisa Campbell from uh, the University of California, Berkeley. So I understand that you, Lisa, met him first. Yes. I work as a special events coordinator at the University of California, Berkeley mm -hmm. Police Department. So he came in wanting to host an event on campus, and he says, uh, you're going to love this. I need to talk to you. I've got something that you, the entire world, is going to want to know. Okay, so this is an unexpected meeting. It's an unexpected, unplanned meeting. Okay. So I said, okay, so what is it about? How does this relate to the University of California? He says, well, the FBI is involved. Everybody's going to want to know it's God's desire, and it's, it's God's purpose. And while he's talking, I happen to just turn and slightly, and I see the two young girls that were standing on the outer office. And how young did they appear to be to you? Between 11 and 15. Uh-huh. Um, and I look over at the girls, and so I said, well, whose children are these? And he says, they're mine. So I said, hey, girls, how are you? Come on in. And, and they sort of just kind of stayed propped, like, as though he set it up so that he would create the distraction and they were just there in eye view. Mm -hmm. And so I look at him, and I look at the girls, and he's going on and on, and he's extremely animated, and they are not. They are actually not. It's the nonverbal. So the girls appeared to be what, robotic to you or... They were beautiful. They were pretty girls, but they just weren't animated. They weren't interactive. Uh, it was a nonverbal communication. It was just as though they were props. And okay. we were talking about... So did that send off a red yeah. flag or a yellow flag? More of a yellow. Mm -hmm. Just what's happening here. Okay, what, so what's happening here? Yeah. So you set up another appointment for the next day. Correct. And then what? I went to Allison and asked her if she could... I, no, I told her what I had. I said, Allie, this, is, this guy is in my office. He's got these two young girls. Something's not right. Something's not right. Yeah, something's not right. Which is the real reason why we're doing this show, everybody, because that is exactly why um, we believe now that this case has, has been, and had been brought to an end and JC is home, is because you sensed something wasn't right. This is what I want everybody to get. This is this could really change the trajectory of your life if you get this. A whisper is not necessarily, unless you're Moses, something in your ear, somebody whispering something in your ear and actually telling you something. By whisper, I mean the feeling that something is not right. That's how slight it is. That is how slight it is. It just is a, hmm, that feels out of place. Hmm, I wonder what's going on. That's what a whisper feels like. <laughs>